Hello and welcome to a new After Effects tutorial. I'm Tony King and in this tutorial we will be answering a request that I received on uh, one of the first arrival uh, title tutorials that I made and this is for the end credits of the movie. Um, so I am pretty proud of this effect. Uh, I think it looks pretty good compared to the one in the movie. I can't show that clip because it is from a movie. Um, but uh, you can watch that if you want. But uh, I do think this is pretty spot on. Uh, and I'm very proud of it. The music is actually from the ending scene and not from the ending credits uh, So it's different, but uh, I just wanted to put that music in here uh, So yeah, here you go All right, there you have it um Sort of abrupt ending, but I was showing just bit, pretty much um, how to get the look, you know. Uh, and it's actually not cr crazy bad, you know. Uh, so let's uh, let's see what we can do here. So here's my comp, and uh, at the top, of course, I have a black solid, um, which has a mask inverted to make these black bars. Uh, you don't worry, have to worry about that, you know. Uh, I just did that for style and let's start at the very bottom so I'm actually gonna turn off the visibility of everything except for the black bars uh, and here we go on the bottom of course I have my music and so on the very bottom I had a medium blue solid and that's because uh, this is not needed at the beginning but I just have it there it's sort of a nice little haze I guess uh, in the background and it does add that color and it is the right color I think um, for the backdrop and now now what we have to do is uh, the uh, the cloud the cloudy parts which is the actual real effect so uh, I did that with two solids and uh, uh, let's start off with the bottom one so as you can see here it's pretty crazy um, so first of all head, send this one to screen sorry for uh, stuttering uh, and then add fractal noise the effect you can find it in here just write fractal and it'll come up uh, fractal noise not just fractal okay uh, and what that does basically is gonna bring up a uh, a crazy sort of a cloudy effect um, so I'm gonna tell you what I did so we're gonna keep the fractal type to basic noise type put it to spline uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a linear for you uh, to begin with but uh, go to spline contrast 100 brightness 10 uh, and put the scale all the way up to 580 to get there you have to open up the transform um, setting here uh, the offset turbulence uh, make sure you can bring that to the middle here um, just uh, by dragging this and uh, drag it towards the middle you know uh, the complexity up to 11 then open up sub settings and this is quite important here uh, sub influence 70 I think that's what it is sub scaling however uh, you have to bring it up to 63.7 and then evolution uh, I'll get back to that so uh, so well I'll just go ahead and tell you at the beginning start on zero and at the very end of this uh, 16 and a half second comp really go to one so I'm gonna head back here uh, to where it starts off so um, what do we have here we have a uh, elliptical mask here and what I did was I actually brought the actual solid uh, farther down let's go to position and the starting position here is 960 623 so I brought it down just a tad and then the elliptical mask only covers the lower half of that solid but the but the top half top half is still going to be there. So what did I do? I added several uh, three three more um, masks. They're all the same mask up here, and I set them to subtract, and they all have mask feather of one thousand. And why is that? Because later when we move this solid, you're gonna you would be able to see the edge. So make sure you have a solid. It doesn't have to be this shape. Um, just make sure that it covers this top part so that you don't see the edge of the solid um, that is also a tip for the future for other things if you do have that edge 
all you have to do is add a uh, a mask and feather it out um, to you know fade out that edge uh, here I had to do several because the edge was pretty sharp um, so here's uh, the bottom layer uh, looking pretty oh wait sorry I forgot so in the main mask here the elliptical mask uh, make sure you bring that feather up to 1000 as well and expand it by 280 as it's here so you have the real solid here in the uh, the solid cloud in the middle and then it sort of fades up uh, in the con contrasting area uh, at the center of the uh, shot okay so let's go to the next one so a lot of these settings are the same but uh, I'll go through it individually regardless um, so here I have it also an elliptical mask I think the settings are the same on this 1000 feather and 280 mask expansion uh, also drag this solid up halfway up the screen pretty much uh, yeah there you go so again in fractal type basic noise type spline brightness up to 15 not to 10 and the scale is 600 not 580 um, let's go down to uh, complexity 10.1 rather than I think it's 11 on here yeah 11 on there 10.1 on here uh, these don't have to be exact but uh, this is just what I have uh, sub influence 70 should be just like that subscaling 68.3 and the evolution is exactly the same on this zero at the start and one at the very end of the um, comp so here you can see this is our basic little um, uh, cloud background here and uh, then what we want to do is add the text of arrival so you can't see it right now because um, I don't know why you can't see it right now. okay there you go sorry um, oh, the opacity. Okay, I'll get back to that. Um, okay, so let's go up to character. And the font I'm using is Slim Joe. The actual font that they used in the movie, I'm pretty sure, is Gotham Light, uh, which is a paid font that I do not have. So I put this uh, the the uh, tracking for the selected characters here to 1,000, and the color is not black. It is like a in very middle bottom of just a blue here. So it's not perfectly black, uh, and it's not blue, it's sort of gray, blue, dark gray, blue. Um, that looks pretty nice. So what I did first, let's go here to about six and a half seconds, I'd say, where I end this uh, title. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select these uh, three layers, which is what we're animating to start here, and I'm going to hit U. Okay. So what did I do here? Um, Make sure to make all these three layers into um, 3D layers. Um, so let's go to the very end. I'm not there yet. Okay, here we are. Well, actually, I was better off. Okay, so here we are at the very last frame of this shot, and this is where we want to end up. Uh, looks pretty good here. Uh, nice and sharp with this Slim Joe font. I like that. Um, so... Here, I'll just bring up this frame so we can see the exact thing. Um, so 962 by 600, I just positioned that in the middle where it worked for me. Uh, all, all we're editing here is the uh, the uh, <laughs> 3D, uh, the Z output, sorry, uh, to negative 353 so that it comes all the way out. Um, next, oh, sorry. Next, I did the same thing on the the uh, the cloudy solids but it, they don't go out as far on the um, on the 3d layer um, they only go out to negative 207 that is because I wanted them to come towards the camera but I wanted the uh, text to be its own individual thing as I feel it is like that in the actual film um, so don't worry about all these other things here We're, we'll get back to that um, so next, um, so I didn't know if you wanted me to end here, but I really like actually these titles. And what I was seeing is that we've got a pretty nice uh, fade in to these effects. And I was thinking about how to do it best. And I'm not going to just do uh, fade in with the opacity. That was, that was going to be sort of um, lame, I guess. Uh, so here I have... The opacity on the uh, very bottom blue layers, I guess turquoise, I guess. 
uh, and the arrival uh, text layer. So uh, this is just after two seconds. So it's a pretty long fade in uh, where I have easy ease on the opacity to 100 and it starts of course at zero. But see, because I didn't want everything to just fade in, but it fit for the letters to fade in. So what did I do? I added a light and lights are a bit of an iffy subject in After Effects, but uh, I think I've got them down pretty good. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and show you uh, my components, the point of interest and all of these um, qualities here are pretty much the same. The position, I did bring it out a lot um, towards the camera, so negative on the z-axis to negative 1343.7. Uh, so, and I'm going to tell you why just in a second, so let's go down to the light options. So the intensity and cone angle is what we're actually animating. So cone angle of course only goes to 180 so when if I was all the way down to a zero on the z-axis it would not encompass the entire screen so that is why you have to bring it out um, all the way far out towards the camera in the uh, positioning uh, but you don't have to keyframe that at all it would probably mess you up too so uh, let's we're here at to uh, just after two seconds where we end the fade in the cone angle is 180 and the intensity is 126 if you go too intense everything's going to be white and you don't want that 126 what is what worked for me it maintained the colors that i liked you can see the blue hue here on these edges looks pretty good uh then at the very start the intensity is negative 65 and the cone angle is 82 uh so i didn't go all the way down to zero on the cone angle because then it's going to have a really harsh edge and you're going to be able to see a whole circle appearing and that's not what we're going for so as you can see 82 does cover the whole shot um so with the intensity of the light the light basically shows what's under it the layers under it and the more light intensity you have the more you see and if you go over 100 the more the brighter it will get and so i, I thought 126 works for me light options of course it's a spotlight Okay, so that is the uh, first arrival shot. Um, and so after six and a half seconds, I cut off of that. So next what I saw is that's when a real, that's when the blue really kicked in in the shot. We don't have to edit the blue layer though. That's just there. So what we're actually editing is the uh, cloud layers. So I, I actually didn't decide to animate the top layer until later on. Um, but here, let me hit you so we can see everything. Um, so what I edited here is the Z rotation, the scale, and the position. To get the Z rotation, of course, it's R, and then just choose Z rotation, and I'm gonna hit you again so we can see all my uh, keyframes here. Uh, so from position, and I like to go all the way to the very end of my comp. So I'm actually gonna turn off the uh, top layer. Well, not, never mind. Uh, this really just sort of dissipates um, because I scaled it up all the way to 267. So it's still there, but you're basically inside a wisp of this uh, little cloud. Uh, the Z rotation is negative 19. As you can see, it did get pretty big and I brought it out. Um, I rotated it just like it, will, it was a camera flying into a cloud and it looks pretty cinematic. And then of course the positioning, I brought it out to 1038 by 774 by negative 570, so even closer to the camera than it was before. Uh, so that is sort of the image of flying into the actual cloud. So let me show you what I did on the uh, top layer, which is a lot easier here. Oh, let me hit you. Uh, okay, so scale, you started on 100 on here. And as you can see, I took off this uh, little constrained proportions because we we are not going to be using the same proportions uh, at the end of this. Uh, Z rotation still and from the position as well. So let's go all the way to the very end. Let's see what I did. I didn't really change the position. I just brought it, uh, I think, down a bit uh, from, no, I brought it up a bit. No, I brought it down a bit. Okay. Uh, to negative, uh, to 361 on the Y axis here. Uh, and it actually doesn't go forwards in the, in the, uh, 3D axis. Uh, in the scale, uh, the, uh, it goes to 100 to 105. 
to 117 and 105 so basically I'm stretching it out just a tad uh, so that I don't you know lose the edge here so you can sort of see it if you look very closely well actually no not not in this frame but some other frames yeah you can uh, and then the Z rotation is positive 6 so they are sort of rotating in the same general direction just that since one is on the top one is on the bottom uh, you have to do positive or negative so as you can see you're opening up sort of to these texts and I think that's what they're going for with uh, these clouds so next is is pretty simple actually this is probably the easiest part of these um, of these uh, animations here is the titles after uh, arrival and I basically copied um, duplicated this and brought it over and made it smaller but this font is not white it's uh this the border here is five so what we're editing is a border on the color it's sort of a uh, really light blue closer to gray than than to white but that's just what I thought it wasn't a perfect white it never really is it's, most times it's not even a perfect black but you know uh, in movies so this is just what I thought looked pretty good I just wrote not directed by and scaled it down a bit brought it up Tony King same thing here and then I made that really long and I tried to be funny but not really funny uh, here so it's pretty much a template from from here on out once you have this animation as and as you can see uh, they do get a little bit clearer and I think it looks really good here uh, I'm quite proud of this this uh, one of some of these shots here um, but yeah that is pretty much the basic effect uh, you don't have to animate the these texts I don't think they were animating the actual thing maybe you'd want to uh, bring them towards the camera with that 3d positioning but I don't think I don't think that's necessary that would probably mess mess it up as well because the bottom layers there of the smoke are are Fords in uh, 3d positioning then you have to scale them down so that they fit properly so I, I don't suggest that you animate uh, these texts I think they're fine just sitting there as the whole everything else is moving um, so yeah that is the basic effect if you have any questions about this I'd be glad to answer them in the comments or make an additional video um, I, th I feel like I did this pretty long regardless uh, I hope I hope everything is clear if it's not of course uh, comment down below but uh, I hope you like this video go ahead and subscribe for more because I hope I get more requests to do more of these and I'm gonna if I come up with something I'll make a tutorial on it regardless um, so yeah thanks for watching I'm Tony King yeehaw baby that was not me that was someone else completely don't forget about it